Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, for the Silver Chair Universe Presents Trend MD. We are excited to have with us Bert Corelli, the Director of Partnerships at Trend MD. Um, and before we get started, uh, I'll just go through a few housekeeping things as usual. Um, you've all been muted, so if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please type them into the chat box and we can address those at the end. We'll have some time for Q&A. Um, the webinar is being recorded and a link to it will be sent to you after the talk. We'll also put it out on our social media in case you'd like to watch again or share it with anyone after the talk. Uh, finally, when the webinar is concluded, you'll get a brief survey. Uh, we appreciate if you could take a moment to complete the survey. It helps us to improve both our universe offerings as well as the webinars themselves. Um, and with that, I am going to hand it over to Bert. Thanks, Stephanie. No problem. All right. Well, hi, everyone, and thank you very much for taking the time to listen in here on this webinar, and I, uh, I hope it is um, a useful uh, use of your time, um, and if you have any questions at all, um, please uh, go ahead, tap them into the chat box here, and we'll, I'm sure we'll have time to, to answer them. Um, so, just to get started, TrendMD is focused on a familiar problem in scholarly publishing, too much content. With over two and a half million articles published each year, more than 8,000 each day, to have your paper discovered and read and ultimately cited is enormously unlikely. The problem poses different challenges to the two main stakeholders of scholarly publishing. For this discussion, I'm going to focus on the publisher side, specifically on the role of marketing within scholarly publishing. Many of you are probably familiar with the report, How Readers Discover Content in Scholarly Publications, which has been produced every three years since 2005 by Simon Inger and Tracy Gardner. The latest version of that survey has just been completed and the results will soon be published. A little preview of them here. Uh, while uh, A&I databases and search engines continue be, to be the first place that users look for articles on a specific subject, browsing is an important part of the researcher workflow. The new findings validate a key point from the previous study, that users continue to value the related articles functionality on publisher websites, while the popularity of other website features like publisher produced news, site search, save search, and alerting continue to decline. So what is this telling marketers? Well, first of all, I think we need to incur acknowledge that marketing is, is playing an increasingly important role in scholarly publishing. And in many ways, scholarly publishing has come to resemble the larger commercial world, where content marketing, the use of content to attract and retain customers, has become increasingly important. In this slide, I've tried to line up some of the website features and activities from Simon's survey versus their relative costs to the, to the publisher. So if you start at the top here with email alerts, um, in other words, uh, email talks and, and citation alerts, they're obviously a, a popular and effective way to communicate with society members, subscribers, and other known users, but it's also limiting. And also the, the, the costs of growing and maintaining email lists puts this on the more expensive side of the box. At the other end of the scale is a way to promote content more broadly. Uh, Publisher-authored blogs and news are both high cost and have shown a steady decline in popularity in the survey. Users seem increasingly to value the content itself over articles about the content. Social media, while not addressed in the survey as a website feature, is included here on both ends of the cost spectrum. Whether paid or free, social media does have its costs including staff time to tweet and post about articles, and optionally, the fees that are paid to uh, Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn to promote those tweets and posts. In the long run, however, uh, how effective is it in achieving a publisher's goals? In two studies that were published last year in JAHA, the Journal of the American Heart Association, uh, researcher Caroline Fox found no evidence that higher Facebook and Twitter mentions actually led to more citations. Uh, let me just back up one more time. Yeah. 
So um, SEO, search optimization, um, is you know obviously getting your, your content ranked as high as possible in search results. It has led to standard practices that nearly all publishers follow. But the fact that it's so widely practiced means it doesn't help a specific paper or journal to rise above the crowd. And there's another limitation of search, which is getting your article to a user who is more likely to cite it means the user has to know exactly what he's looking for. What if the reader doesn't know so precisely? And as the survey showed, related articles are effective and continue to be useful to, to users. As most of your editorial staff can tell you, manually selecting the most important uh, or the most appropriate recommendations to go with every article can be costly in staff time. On the other hand, recommendations generated by TrendMD's collaborative filtering technology can be implemented literally for free, and they have been shown to be more effective, as I will get to in a, in a moment. So what is TrendMD really? TrendMD recommends editorial and sponsored content across many of the world's most highly trafficked scholarly sites. We provide article recommendations that are tailored to the reader's interests presented within the context of the reader's natural workflow. We display over 500 million article recommendations to over 105 million unique users each month reaching over 85% of US academic researchers. We help publishers monetize their content and drive higher engagement. And our users are located all over the world. Uh, the uh, obviously um, dominated by English speaking uh, countries, but since English abstracts are uh, widely used even in journals that are primarily in, in foreign languages like Chinese and Japanese, um, we still have a growing footprint in those countries as well. Of course, simply displaying related content is not a particularly new or unique idea. PubMed related and Google Scholar related links have been around for many years. But TrendMD adds another element to this, with technology very similar to Amazon or Netflix. It recognizes through your browsing history and the history of other users who have read a particular article what additional content you are most likely to be interested in. For example, if you, if you buy a teapot on Amazon, they're not going to recommend six other teapots to you. You'll see other products that people who bought teapots subsequently bought, products that may or may not even be directly related to making tea, but which have the highest likelihood of being clicked on by that cohort group. Likewise, a reader of a BMJ article about smoking will not be presented with more articles specifically about smoking, but might instead see articles on lung cancer, tumor growth, or maybe public health hazards of secondary smoke. Collaborative filtering was shown to produce higher click-through rates in a study conducted by the Journal of Medical Internet Research using A-B testing with recommendations alternately derived from two different methodologies. The first, shown in red here, was a standard keyword-based matching algorithm, similar to your, your um, uh, familiar PubMed-related articles. And in the blue, using the trend, trend MD's collaborative filtering, which adds the Amazon or Netflix-like element of other users like you also read these articles. So as you can see, over time, Collaborative filtering achieves a kind of learning effect that leads to higher click-through rates and higher overall engagement. So the, uh, the vertical column is, is uh, click-through rate of, of, the, uh, um, of the widget. So recommendations are both to a publisher's own content and content from other sites in the network. Um, this cross-publisher network is managed through a credit system by which publishers earn credits for displaying third-party content and spend credits they earn and purchase to promote their own content. Publishers' own content is typically displayed first on the left side uh, in a two-column format or in a one-column display, as I'll show you a couple of examples, uh, as the first half of the recommendations. And so your internal recommendations 
are what are enabling you to generate more page views per user at no cost. These can be within the same journal or for publishers that have multiple titles, an opportunity to cross promote between your journals. The external recommendations that you see on the right side of, a, of, a, of the widget or in the, the second half of the recommendations are what we call sponsored content. Publishers use their earned or purchased credits to expose their content to readers of third party journals. And this is how publishers are finding new readers from across the network with this, this side of the, of the equation. So to, to, to put a little finer uh, detail on it, when a, when a reader of your journal clicks on an external article, you are earning a half a traffic credit um, from, from that interaction. And when a reader of a third party journal clicks on one of, their, one of your article links, you're spending a credit. So publishers uh, typically see an a increase in overall page views of from 3 to 5% using TrendMD just for free. Um, higher increases in, uh, in traffic come from purchasing additional credits through the, our professional and enterprise plans. Most publishers start out on the free plan to get a baseline idea of what their potential traffic lift is and to see where their new users can potentially come from. You, uh, you have access to a, a dashboard and to regular monthly reports that show um, for every single article that was clicked on uh, where those, those users came from, what journals, what articles, right down to the article level they were reading um, when they clicked on the link to your article. The uh, professional and enterprise plans also include features that allow you to shape the traffic that you get. In other words, directing traffic to the content you want to promote or targeting specific groups of users by country, institution, and by profession. So here are a few typical goals that, that uh, some of our uh, publishing clients um, have uh, told us about and some strategies that, and, that they've been able to use uh, with TrendMD. Uh, to, to uh, achieve those goals. So if your goal is to increase the impact factor of your journal, then it makes sense if you, to promote only that content that affects the, um, the impact factor uh, in, when you're spending your credits. Um, or perhaps spending, uh, sponsoring just a subset of articles, like ones that you know will have a, uh, a high interest to a broader market beyond your, uh, your typical subscriber base. Um, publishers who have used TrendMD when they've launched a new site have, have um, under these, these types of plans, been able to focus their credits on one journal, like a journal that's, that's not uh, used as much. So it's a way of leveraging your own organic traffic of a flagship journal, for example, uh, to, uh, to promote uh, a journal that, you, that needs wider uh, attention. You could also highlight a sub-discipline. Uh, one, one of our publishing clients is, is um, experimenting with uh, potential new journals that they may launch uh, on sub-disciplines. And rather than going through the expense uh, and the risk of you know, launching a journal, uh, a whole journal on that topic, um, they are taking a collection of articles from their own journals and uh, and promoting those and to see what the uptake is and and, and um, you know use that data then to uh, help them to make a decision about whether or not they're going to launch another journal. Um, increasing author submissions. One one tactic that, that publishers use um, using some of the the back end data that we're able to provide them with, uh, since they see what a user was reading when they clicked on your recommendation, they can see. The uh, who the authors were. So, so one strategy is to to sort of look at that as a, a potential outreach uh, source for uh, for authors to to um, submit papers. And, you know, basically uh, sending an email to an author and saying, you know, I see that many of our readers are interested in your work, and uh, perhaps the next time you have a paper, you might want to consider submitting to our journal. Um, and also. also uh, increasing your subscription sales. So you, you can actually use this tool as a, as a, as a way to uh, target 
particular users. We can, we can do it by, by geographic location or by IP address. Um, and, uh, you know, typically if this is used by publishers as a way, uh, if a uh, consortium or uh, an institution is uh, in a trial, let's, let's say, for example, uh, and you want to make sure that their users are exposed as much as possible to your content, um, you can take and focus the credits that you have uh, and show uh, content only to those users for, for, a, for a given campaign. Um, and it's, it's also used by a couple of publishers as a way of, of making sure that um, usage stays high at those targeted institutions um, so that when you go back to them at renewal time, um, you, you, uh, you have a good story, you, you, the data looks good on, uh, on usage. So um, these are just a few of the, of the examples. Um, TrendMD can be a powerful tool, uh, I, I hope I'm getting that point across, in, in your marketing program. And uh, we have a number of case studies that I would be happy to share with you that uh, demonstrate how TrendMD is provided. Um, some of the benefits that, uh, that, that, are, that are shown here, growing your readership, obviously this is, this is a core, um, driving subscriptions, I mentioned that, increasing downloads, all of these benefits. For, uh, for this presentation, I would like to focus on uh, one case study that um, was recently published in the journal Scientometrics, which demonstrated how TrendMD can help boost citations for a journal. Um, so to describe this study, we used Mendeley saves as an indicator of future citation. And the reason we did this was because a number of studies over the past few years, years have shown that Mendeley saves can be an effective proxy for predicting future citation. When you think of it intuitively, that makes sense because the purpose of Mendeley is to record references that users will subsequently add to their documents. So uh, in order to see if promotion of articles through TrendMD increases Mendeley saves, the team conducted a four-week randomized controlled tile, uh, trial and uh, 400 articles were published uh, in the Journal of Medical Internet Research. Um, they were randomly selected, 200 of which were promoted through TrendMD and 200 as a control. The results were striking. Uh, the articles promoted by TrendMD showed a 77% increase in article saves on Mendeley relative to the control arm. And looking more closely at the individuals that were visiting articles, randomized uh, to, uh, to TrendMD revealed some interesting secondary effects as well. The articles promoted through TrendMD received a 95% increase in their mean total page views relative to the control over this four week trial. And these findings are consistent with uh, prior findings that we've done in another study and they were published in the journal Learned Publishing uh, in which we showed how cross publisher distribution um, using TrendMD led to a 49% increase in weekly article page views relative to uh, baseline traffic over a three-week period. So that, that article, um, I, I will make these slides available and um, links to some of these studies as well um, that you, you can uh, get a hold of. Um, and somewhat more surprising um, in this, uh, it, that came out of this case study was that the increased page views um, using uh, 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 of the articles that, that were promoted by TrendMD were correlated to their organic page views. So in other words, the, the TrendMD promoted articles received more visitors even when those additional visitors came from sources other than a TrendMD link. Uh, one possible explanation for this is that promotion of, of articles with TrendMD leads to higher discovery simply because individuals visit those articles more frequently. This could include readers saving them as bookmarks on an internet browser, uh, visiting them later, or sharing articles with their colleagues over email, or spreading via word of mouth. Another factor that could explain this is that the presence of TrendMD links may lead to higher search engine optimization on Google. In other words, TrendMD articles rank higher in Google search results due to having more backlinks on the page. Um, uh, and, um, and, and lastly, um, TrendMD visitors were more engaged when compared to control uh, to the control, and, and more sharing of articles took place. 
the article, the TrendMD articles had lower bounce rates, and the site visitors who who arrived via the TrendMD links visited a greater number of pages uh, per session uh, than than other uh, popular referrals. You know, typically we find with with our clients that uh, the TrendMD um, as a referral source is in their top three or at least the top five of, uh, of referrals along with PubMed, Google, Google Scholar. So we do have um, a few examples of, uh, um, of the, uh, the TrendMD widget installed on, on uh, silver chair sites and I'm going to just jump over to the live example here just for a little better um, description. So um, this is an example on IWA. Uh, which is the um, uh, International Water Association uh, that just launched recently on uh, on Silverchair, and uh, you'll see here um, the widget is at the the the, the um, right hand column, so it's it's in a single column. They're showing four uh, links, and um, you can you can have as few as four. You can have as as many as twelve. Um, but in any case, half of them, the first two, are uh, from other um, other IWA publications, and the second two are from third party publications. So uh, I'm going to click on one of these to just show you. So it, you'll notice that the um, uh, the third party recommendations are accompanied by a little. Uh, symbol that, that shows that you're going to another site, or in other words, you're you're actually opening a uh, another window in your browser. So you'll notice you don't actually leave the uh, the page. You're still you know you're still there, but now you've opened up another another window. And uh, so this is an example of uh, um, of a link that was to a, another publisher's uh, uh, article. Um, and in that interaction just now. Um, the, the De Gruyter hosted publisher um, spent a, a credit to uh, to get that uh, that new user and um, and IWA um, uh, acquired a half a credit for their balance that they can then use. Um, so that's one example. Um, another one is um, on the JAMA site, which uh, also launched just in the last month and a half or so. And um, you'll notice that JAMA has a more customized solution. Um, and uh, in, in their case, they're using uh, Silverchair's own native um, recommendation widget for internal recommendations to other JAMA articles and using um, his marked here with others also liked um, using TrendMD for, the, um, uh, for external recommendations only. And uh, there's a, like I say, it's a little bit more of a customized display. Here it is in a different, um, uh, different display. Yeah. Also using the others also like. So all of this is completely customizable. Uh, whether you want to say recommended for you or also recommended or others also liked, uh, any number of those those types of of things are um, are, are possible. And uh, yeah, so. Just to uh, to put a finer touch on uh, on the um, on how this works on the Silver Chair Universe program. Um, get back to full view here. The slide. Um, so uh, your installation is is free to use uh, to to install the widget. Um, you spend your earned credits to get additional traffic, and um, so those are at no cost at all. Um, and you can expect to see a three to five percent uh, increase in uh, additional traffic. And then uh, you can also purchase additional traffic for higher gains or specific uh, targets that you that you have. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to take a, uh, a a brief pause here and ask if there are any questions that anybody might have um, about uh, anything. Uh, that I've said so far. Yes, Stephanie, go ahead. Oh, yep. I don't see uh, I don't see any questions that have come into the chat so far. Um, so we'll just kind of wait see if anyone wants to type any in there. 
Um, I appreciate the case studies. It's nice to see how the internal versus external recommendations, the you know variety of ways that they can be treated, um, the the new tabs so that you you know keep people on the site even while recommending um, content from other sites. That's really great to see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the questions that that people often ask is is you know why should I show external links on my site? Um, you know, I've, I've I've gone through all the trouble of, of curating uh, all of the elements on my page, um, and um, and and one of the, the things that, that I, I often point out to publishers is that is that you already do have a fair number of external links on a page. I mean, just when you think of your reference uh, links that are within each article, um, mm -hmm. oftentimes uh, links to Google Scholar, links to PubMed. Um, the the difference with TrendMD is that is that you're getting something back. For sending somebody to another to another site for for recommending another another site, so so you're um, un unlike any of those other types of links, you um, you're actually you know you're building credits in the system which you then use, uh, and um, and that's so that's an important uh, important mm -hmm. distinction. In addition to building uh, your reputation for the site as a resource uh, for content, um, so it's definitely uh, builds research or rapport in that way. I'm sure. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Um, we um, I, I haven't focused so much on the user side or on the reader benefits um, in this in this presentation, but um, but we have we have had uh, in a in a couple of uh, discussions and, a, and there's a there's a blog article that we have on our site um, where we've interviewed some uh, some researchers. One one in particular that I thought was un interesting, um, who um, is runs a lab at Cold Spring Harbor. And he's uh, what I would consider a younger generation of, um, of, of researchers. Um, he's a professor there at Cold Spring Harbor, and he, he was saying, you know, having things to click on for <laughs> for his cohort, for for for, for people of uh, who grew up with the web, um, uh, it's 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 a natural thing to see. Oh yeah, the, let me just see what this article has to offer. So uh, you know, those are. Um, it's it is interesting to to see uh, you know there may be some generational um, uh, changes or, or or differences in habit that uh, make this type of, of of thing to something that users expect they expect to see um, you know additional links additional paths to um, articles that are of interest to them. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, um, I don't see any other questions uh, coming in quite yet. Uh, if anyone has any, they're always welcome to uh, send them in to us afterwards. Um, Bert, was there any anything else uh, you wanted to mention before we wrap up? Sure. Since we have a, a few minutes, um, I'll point out a couple of other um, case studies that uh, sure. you can link to. You can see on our on our uh, website. Um, you can see there's, there's quite a variety of ways that, that publishers have used TrendMD um, uh, to solve particular marketing um, uh, you know, challenges that they have. So this is one example of the clinics um, uh, publications uh, published by Elsevier. Um, they ran uh, an experiment to see whether uh, having TrendMD uh, recommending the articles and, and the clinics journals uh, could make a difference. So this is a year-on-year -year, uh, study. They, they were comparing their 2016 uh, pay-per-view revenue um, with the same sites um, the, the previous year when they didn't have TrendMD. And you can see that consistently over, over uh, you know, month on month, um, their pay-per-view revenue increased as a result. Um, so so that, was, that was an interesting study. That's, that goes back a bit. Um, this, is, this is another one. Uh, so Biomed Central's goal was to attract more papers, to, to get more uh, submissions. <clears throat> Obviously, it makes a big deal for uh, open access. Excuse me. <clears throat> so they, <clears throat> my goodness, um, they wanted to see if promoting the articles through TrendMD could be a more effective way to solicit new papers than other forms of outreach that they had. So they, this graph shows the results of a survey of new authors to determine what led them to submit papers. Overwhelmingly, authors responded that the key influence was discovery of other papers that were published in their field by Biomed Central. So uh, discovery, 
leads to a lot of uh, benefits to publishers. Um, this was um, referring to um, the article I mentioned earlier about that, that was published in Learned Publishing. Um, this was another study um, that was uh, done that showed a 49% increase uh, in art weekly article views. Um, that was that was fairly significant. Um, and uh, and then a, a study more recently on the BMJ um, selected a thousand articles and um, and used them um, as a control group um, with um, both paid and unpaid widgets. Um, so using the, um, the, the just earned traffic on, on the one hand versus um, putting a budget behind those those particular articles, and um, they saw a return on investment, uh, you know, 28% uh, increase in, in their in their weekly page views. Um, so. Just want to give you a little glimpse of some of the, the analytics that you have available. Um, we have a, a dashboard view. We also are able to provide more detailed reports, and we do this whether you're on the free plan or on the on, a, on our paid plans. Um, and uh, uh, just you know uh, to talk about pricing just uh, briefly. The as I mentioned, the starter plan, the free plan, is something that uh, probably about. Um, um, Maybe maybe 50% of our of our publishers stay on the free plan for you know any as long as they want, um, and that, that includes promoting all of their content. But uh, but most of the publishers uh, over time have chosen to um, adopt one or more of our paid plans because they see the value of TrendMD as a strategic marketing tool. Um, so you, in addition to uh, to getting additional credits, you're also unlocking other features, ways to focus your uh, your credits, ways to uh, target uh, users, etc. Um, and targeting, I mentioned uh, country, region, um, even down to uh, users. We for for folks in the medical professions, um, being able to target um, by NPI number is a new feature that we're just introducing. So if you have specific messages you want to get to particular specialists, TrendMD is a way of doing that, um, that, that uh, you can get your content uh, into the workflows of the people you value the most. And uh, you know, setting up a campaign is a, um, is, is a pretty easy thing to do. Our, uh, our folks uh, on the back end will uh, take care of, uh, of all of the the details for you. You just say how much you want to spend, how many new users you want to find, you want to get, um, and um, and and we will set up um, based on uh, cost per click. Um, anyway, that's in a nutshell uh, TrendMD. And um, as I say, uh, I welcome uh, any questions that you may have uh, going forward. Uh, you can contact me directly. Or um, through um, through Silver Chair, through your um, through your product delivery manager, uh, you can make a request to have uh, the TrendMD widget installed on your site, and um, we'll take it from there. Great, thank you so much, Bert. That was wonderful. Um, as I said before, this uh, the recording of this webinar will go out in case you'd like to share it with anyone. Uh, as part of the survey, you can ask follow-up questions, uh, or you can feel free to email those at any time, like Bert said, either to him or to your PDM. We'd be happy to have discussions about that. Um, and with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us, Bert, and thank you everyone for attending. We hope to see you on a future webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.